<coughs> and we're live. Driving in the Nevada desert. Yep. Driving in the plain old deserts of Nevada. Yep. Just like the good old wild wild west. So we're approaching the Las Vegas sign, or other words, the entry to Vegas. And uh, it's afternoon right now, it's 5.50 in the afternoon, and the sun's still rising up. So, um, this is very wide space, huge lands, and very yeah, big properties. Yeah. Yeah, we're almost there. Is that M that we can uh -huh. see from there? Yeah. yeah. Properties, yeah, big properties to build there for the past 10 years since we were here. Just building housing and housing expansion. School buses. Yep, M Casino right there. Been there for almost eight years, Public probably. Public school buses. Yeah, school buses. I just love filming just in the middle of the desert with these houses, this kind of arranged properties right here. Sometimes uh, also get some cool things without talking so we can use it in a movie. Yeah, we can. Cool well, this time it's just a random talk and then, you know, just, just exploring these uh, houses. Exploring this housing properties and suburbs around this middle of the desert and just yeah the modernized Las Vegas as you said the modernized city where's the casino where are the casinos oh not here probably it's probably facing behind right there. so it's just somewhere around there, there. yeah there so yeah Yeah. 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yep, those condominiums are there, or how do you call them, apartments? Apartment, uh, yeah. Apartments. Yep. When you're here in this, you know, kind of, uh, in this kind of place, what's the use of buying a condo when you can just buy a house here? I wouldn't want to, if I had that, if I had that money, I wouldn't really like buy those kind of apartments like those. I probably will just be in a house where it's, you know, very clean, and you know some people uh, don't want to live uh, in their they want to rent instead of home yeah because there's a lot of responsibility to be owner yeah there is you're right in the other side the other hand the it's still the same though but the, yeah, that's what you want to put it that way I'm fine with it correct usage correctness Political correctness. <laughs> I need to have you read the Hobbes uh, uh, handbook cover to cover on correct usage. <laughs> to rank O. Yeah, whatever. Uh, let's take the rank O. Why? Because the one there goes on the hill again. And no, 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 there's no hill on the other side. Or do you want to make a... Alright. It's like we just came from the movie. Mm. Can you film them? Yep. Modernized infrastructure. 
yeah those kind of modernized infrastructures So we are I'm recording right now and uh, just a little slideshow for this trip. Yep. And we're coming to a full stop. And I got no choice but to still hold on until it goes to green. Yep. Yep. Against President Trump by his domestic enemies. The basic storyline is uh, these enemies, namely uh, supporters of Hillary Clinton, are using so-called Russophobia to prevent improvement in U.S.-Russian relations. Many of the characters at the center of the story are in Russia. What have we heard from them? For example, the lawyer. The I think the what happened was that. The Russians drugged the mind of the Bernie sector and the Hillary sector in in trying to believe in in trying in trying in trying to uh, in order to disarray the uh, the Democrats. Yeah, because I think the the, the progressive, passionate people who are always who are super hard in backing Bernie, like fifty like fifty of them. They went just already had already just went for Hillary because you know like the first female the while the other fifty still couldn't accept the fact that Hillary was the uh, nominee like they were so passionate about Bernie and they got this 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 information uh, that were that were spread off by the Russians so I, I, I uh -huh. That's even though Donald Trump Jr. Uh, himself released these mm -hmm. emails. What about from the Russian government? What mm -hmm. have they said about this? I understand Foreign Minister mm -hmm. no. Sergei Lavrov spoke today. Well, Sergei Lavrov is known for having quite a, a sharp wit and a sharp tongue. He said he was uh, uh, amazed when he heard the news today. Uh, he said two people were accused. I almost left the video. It's not really and called the coverage. Big deal. Actually, used the word barbaric and he said serious people are making uh, a mountain out of a molehill. We also heard from uh, President Vladimir Putin's spokesman, his name is Dmitry Peskov. Uh, he said that to call the, the lawyer in question a government attorney, he, he used the words absurd and inappropriate. He said uh, the Kremlin doesn't have the slightest relationship to this So it sounds like the overarching message. Well, we're being half covered by this nothing to see truck this here. Fake news. It's made up. Pay attention to something else. And yet, this is consuming the American public news media to some extent. That's the link there. They say one of the biggest, or the biggest first wheel. Yes. Possibly. Whatever. He also said he didn't really think it was a coincidence that these revelations came out now. But he also said that you know he was asked, will it be harder for Trump to make concessions now? He said we understand that Trump is under a lot of pressure. 